Yo, what's up, beautiful people, man? Welcome back to the channel. Um, first off, before we jump into this video, man, first, I have to apologize. Um, I did have some videos uh, in the queue ready to uh, send out for you all last week, but when I went back to actually edit the videos, I realized some way, somehow, I broke my mic that I use for vlogging. So, literally, two videos, two vlogs, two tutorials is just me sitting there talking and explaining and you can't hear anything. How I broke the mic, don't really know, but it's okay. We got a new one coming soon and we'll repurpose those videos or those topics some the time. But it's not what we're here to talk about today. Today we're here to talk about camera settings. So as you guys know, you guys being on the channel from at any point in time, you guys know that I've been shooting with the Canon EOSR literally for everything and all things uh, camera related here on the channel. Um, specifically when it comes to me doing um, videography or cinematography. Um, so today I'm gonna give you guys my full settings and literally every camera setting that I use so that if you guys are Canon USR users, maybe you can guys use these same settings to get, you know, a better image quality or, you know, just get a better hands-on and understanding of how to get the most out of your camera. So let's just go ahead and jump straight into it. So you come over to your menu it should look something similar like this here and as you can see the first uh camera setting is movie recording quality and for me i literally shoot everything in 4k so whatever is the highest resolution that you have i would select that and then as far as frame rate i always shoot in 24 frames per second or as is labeled here on the camera is 23.98p or frames per second. And as far as the codec that I use, I use all, all I. So the difference between all I and IPB are literally two different types of compression. Um, there, if you Google all I and versus IPB here on YouTube, I'm pretty sure you'll come up with some of the videos that you can reference to kind of figure out or truly understand the difference between the two and if you guys are interested in that but as far as me i don't really care i kind of understand the uh, differences but the minute i found out that uh ai is or all i is a least compressed um, format compared to ipb i just stuck with that and haven't switched so as far as uh recording quality or recording resolution 4k at 24 frames per second so now moving on to our shutter speed. So if you guys are familiar with the 180 degree rule when it comes to um, doubling your shutter angle, the same thing similarly applies when you're shooting on a DSLR. To get that natural looking motion blur, you still wanna double your shutter speed to whatever your frame rate is. So if you're shooting at 4K 24 frames per second, we wanna shoot and we wanna shoot something for 48 frames per second as far as our shutter speed. But again, since being on a DSLR, 48 isn't an option, so thus I always shoot at 1 50th of a second. So again, camera settings always, as far as resolution goes, it's always 4K at 24 frames per second. And my sh shutter speed is always set double my frame rate. So again, 1 1 1 50th of a second. So yeah. So now moving on to ISO. All cameras have a quote unquote native iso which they shoot or perform their best at so for me i always leave the uh iso at 800 when i'm filming indoors so that's a very important part um to just mention inside anytime i'm filming indoors the iso is always set to 800. now when i'm outside the iso i'll drop it down to the around 100, 200, just depending on one, if I have an ND filter into how sunny it is outside. So when indoors, ISO 800, when outdoors, ISO 800, or 
whatever you need to do to make sure you get a good exposed image if you aren't using ND filters. For, for me personally, I'm a big fan of Boca or Bokeh. Boca or Bokeh? I like to say Boca. So thus, anytime when I'm shooting, I always shoot as wide open as possible. So for me, all of the lenses that I have can drop down to a f1.4. So for me, I literally leave all of my cameras there at f1.4 unless, you know, certain conditions where I may leave an ND filter at home and don't have one, then I have to, you know, make adjustments as needed. But my go-to is always shoot as wide open as possible to get that nice, creamy, you know, blurry background and that good separation between your subject and your background. So if you can, one for it. If you can't, as low as possible. Like if you're on the zoom camera, if the lowest is like 2.8, film at 2.8 or, you know, 1.8, film the fastest as possible or shoot at the lowest, shoot at the lowest available aperture stop, which is also the fastest for the camera, if that makes sense. So yeah, shoot it, shoot wide open. So when it comes to shooting on mirrorless cameras, all mirrorless cameras have something that's called digital image stabilization. So I know when I first did the camera review on the USR, a lot of people were asking me how do I like using it or if I don't use it. And honestly, digital IS is never turned down on my camera. So wait, let me show you guys. So as you can see right here, movie digital IS disabled. I literally never turn it on. So, you know, if you guys want to use it, you know, go ahead. But for me personally, I don't use digital IS because for the most part, when I'm shooting, the camera is either locked off on a tripod for a steady stable shot, something similar to this, or I have it placed on a gimbal. So for me personally, I don't necessarily need the digital IS when I have those two options of stabilization available to me, but then also when I'm shooting, my lenses have IS on them. So yeah, you know, it's kind of up to you and what your options are. Like if you have a lens, like for a perfect example, um, the 24 and the 35, both of those lenses do not have IS on them. But for the most part, like I said, I use a tripod. If you don't have a tripod available and you know, you're just shooting handheld, then you may want to consider using the digital IS. But if you're like me and you use a tripod or if you use a gimbal, you may not necessarily need it. But you know, that's for you to kind of work out, to try to experiment with and see what you, the image looks like with the IS on and with the IS off. And then you can kind of gauge that from there. But for me personally, I don't really use it. So anytime if I'm blogging, I do kind of use um, a mic to actually uh, record my audio. But for the most part, um, when I'm filming or actually making some type of film or like interview, I'm always uh, recording audio off camera. So to an external recorder, but in the event that I do need uh, the built in audio from the camera, um, I kind of set the uh, audio recording to manual and then I'll just set the recording level to about 50%, which is kind of the uh, middle bar here, I guess. And I'll kind of show you guys here. So, so there we go. So yeah, um, that's the audio settings for that. Um, all right, so when it comes to setting uh, my white balance, I always select uh, or default to using the Kevin scale when selecting my color temperature. Now, I can show you guys actually right here um, on the camera is already defaulted or set to uh, 5500 Kelvin, um, which for me, when I'm actually filming indoors, is kind of where I keep it at when I'm filming here in the office. But if I am out blogging, I typically set the white balance to uh, auto and set um, or set the camera settings to uh, prioritize the whites um, within the shot. So it's kind of up to you if you have time on set or if you're out filming, you actually want to control the aesthetic. I would suggest using the Kelvin scale. And if you're new to it, just simply just play around 
we'll slide in the Kelvin scale all the way to the left and all the way to the right so you can kind of get an idea of the effect that it plays um, on your image. But if you're like me too, if you're just out vlogging and you don't really care, just set it to auto and you'll be fine. But I do both. So now it's a picture profile setting. So for me personally, I don't use a picture profile setting, which really doesn't even give me the option. Um, as you can see here um, on camera, uh, I don't have the option to select picture style. And that's because for the most part, I film all of my uh, films with the USR using Canon c -Log. So if you guys remember when I first put the video out about me actually picking up this camera, the c -Log action was kind of like one of the major um, pros or benefits that actually pushed me to actually getting this camera. Um, so that I was able to, you know, practice with my color grading and, you know, developing a certain aesthetic when it came to my films. So if you are a Canon EOS R user, always have Canon log on or C log on. So just simply come down to where it says Canon log settings and we're going to select that. And right there, as you can see, Canon log is on and we do have the option to record um, at 10 bit. But in order to do that, you will need an external monitor that can record. So that is it. Those are all of my camera settings that I use on the Canon EOS R for all of my films, whether it's vlogs or short films that uh, we've made about Lola. So if this video was helpful for you in any type of way, make sure to hit that like button. And if you aren't already subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so so you're notified when future vlogs, tutorials, documentary shorts, or whatever the case may be, um, goes live here on the channel. But until next time, peace.